Hey, what's up? Did you guys know that Logic was biracial? I, like, just found out that Logic is biracial. He doesn't talk about it in, like, interviews or in his songs or online or on rapgenius.com where he could go online and annotate his rap lyrics about him being biracial, which, of course, don't exist because it's, like, the music industry's most well-kept secret that Logic is biracial. Um... I don't know the script. I don't know the next line. Goddamn. So, for those of you who don't know, Logic, full name Sir Robert Reisenhall II, is a rapper, and he's biracial. So, there's this aspect of this discussion about Logic's biracial identity that's always bothered me. And this channel's express purpose is for me to spend way too long thinking about things that bother me. So, here we are. And I want to make it clear from the outset that I am not bothered by the plain idea of Logic rapping about or talking about being biracial. There's this component of this discourse whereby people just sort of clown him for always talking about it and always rapping about it, which he refutes. But even if we took that for granted and we confirmed that every line of every rap song he's ever written was about being biracial, I wouldn't care. The, the extent to which he does it has no bearing on how I feel. Lines like I'm just as white as that Mona Lisa I'm just as black as my cousin Keisha I'm biracial so bad for me Two and That's just cause I'm being nice Matter of fact, I'm taking my That's like a one point two Well, I don't think they're good I'm not gonna like raise a pitchfork over it If Logic wants to have his corny lines about being biracial Then I think he should go for it The issue is that sometimes these lines get a little Problematic Logic and white privilege. So, for example, on the second track of his 2017 album, Everybody, Logic raps on the titular song. The lowest is what? Zero. So let's close read a little. In these lines, Logic challenges the idea that he benefits from white privilege by discrediting the phenomenon altogether. What the fuck is white privilege, Logic asks you. When I was a kid, white people were mean to me, he continues. He whines. He belly aches. So for those of you who, like Logic apparently, might not know what white privilege is, it is the benefits of passing as a white person in a society tailored to white people. Race is a social construct. There's no meaningful biological differences between people of different races. There's no rigid biological construction or categorization to race. And when society constructs your race for you, it doesn't ask about where your parents came from or where their parents came from or about your genetic composition. You, with your face and your hair and your body, present yourself to the world. And everyone who beholds you all these people conditioned by the societies in which white privilege thrives determines your race for you and acts accordingly. So I could show you this picture of me and you're like, oh, it's a black guy. Because society has taught you that people with this color skin and this color and style of hair are black. If I showed you this picture of Michael Stevens from Vsauce, you'd be like, oh, he's white. And when it comes to logic, I mean, come on, sis. If I saw logic walking down the street and I didn't know who he was, I would probably think he was white. And the reality is that if you saw a stranger and they looked like Logic, then barring any contradictory evidence, for all intents and purposes, you're gonna think he's white. And this is more than likely going to be a subconscious process more than a conscious one. You don't consciously take note of someone's skin color or hair type or whatever. Your brain sees it. You open your eyes, those photons hit your retinas and your brain had that information now. If the police interrogates you later, you're going to be able to describe him, and you're going to say he was white. So passing is an important term because first impressions generally don't involve a full rundown of one's ancestral background. So as long as people look at Logic and their lizard brain tells them that there's a white guy standing in front of them right now, Logic will necessarily benefit from white privilege. On Genius.com, Logic explains this line. Explains this line. When I say but he was born with the white privilege. Man, what the fuck is that? I obviously know what white privilege is. I'm not a fucking idiot. I don't know what it's like to walk down the street as a dark-skinned black man. 
Without question, I do not know or understand what that is, and I'm not saying that the things I've gone through are any less or any more important than that. What I'm saying is, I'm just telling my story and letting it be known that, like, people can be like, you get ahead or you get this and you get that. Like, I'm a biracial person who looks white in a black man's rap game, who's not accepted by many parts of the culture because of how I look. I don't know. Maybe life would have been easier for me if I became a fucking accountant or something, but I didn't do that. And I faced diversity and I said, fuck that. I'm going to go do this because I'm proud of that. Great. So Logic's main argument here is that it was hard for him to be a rapper because he doesn't look black. And I would love to speak to that point because it is so bad. But I kind of feel like I shouldn't have to because it doesn't explain the lines it's supposed to be annotating. Okay, you think hip-hop is prejudiced against white people. So what? What does this have to do with white privilege? Are you trying to posit that white privilege doesn't apply to you because you want it to be a rapper and not an accountant? Really? What? He says in an annotation of the next line, My grandparents, I'd beg to sleep at their house and I'd be like, Oh, can I stay in the guest room? They're like, Oh, it's being redone. I'd be like, Oh, can I sleep on your couch? Like, no, sorry. Like, okay, I'll sleep on the floor. I didn't really realize until later it was because I was black. So this is supposed to explain the line about white people shaming him for being black. But this doesn't speak to the topic of white privilege at all. Logic passing for white here doesn't matter because his racist grandparents know for a fact that, well, I don't, I don't know the lines and I'm moving away from the computer. Logic passing for white here doesn't matter because his grandparents know his ethnic background. Unlike the average passerby who only has his appearance and presentation to go on, his grandparents know he's half black. Yes, your grandparents were racist dicks, but you're still a white passing straight man in a straight white man's world. The only thing Logic says in these annotations that pertains to the actual line is that he knows what white privilege is. But I actually think he doesn't. Logic correctly states that his experience as a black man is going to be very different from that of a dark-skinned black man, one who won't pass as white to the average passerby. However, he shies away from admitting that his whiteness comes with obvious societal advantages. Instead, he just says that he's not saying the things he's been through are any more or less important than that, or whatever. And I mean, I generally try to steer away from who's the most oppressed arguments, so I guess logic. But what he's missing in his explanation of white privilege or his explanation of his understanding of white privilege is a definitive, yes, when America sees me and sees a white person, I get to enjoy some of the benefits of being a white person in America. As simple as that, Logic. Logic and not seeing color. And I was trying to figure out why Logic thinks like this. Why is his conception of how race affects our lives so disjointed and misguided? Why can't he recognize his own privilege? And I think I found my answer. Let's turn to the song Killing Spree. Zero. Why are all of these trash? Zero. So here, Logic speaks on our eagerness to invoke the racial identity of a violent criminal in order to extrapolate some reasons behind the execution of the crime. So when a black person commits a crime or is alleged to have committed a crime, according to Logic, we as a society have a tendency to use that person's blackness to make sense of the situation. And so their blackness then becomes essential for us to figure out their intentions, their motives, the litany of thoughts that drove them through the execution of terrible crimes, and even maybe their presumed innocence or guilt. According to logic in these lines, mostly arbitrary, socially constructed identities become a key component in how we make sense of violent crimes and the people who commit them. With just blaming on a motherfucker killing everyone, logic puts forth that these identities should have no bearing. We should blame crime not on the criminal's blackness or religion or gender identity, but squarely on them. And I mostly agree with him on that front. But these lines have one fatal flaw, and I think it's very indicative of Logic's worldview. Why did he have to lump white people into this? 
black people and Muslims are routinely unfairly scrutinized for the actions of a minority of black slash Muslim people. So their inclusion in this line about decentering race from how we interpret criminal behavior makes sense. We should be able to study a crime committed by a black person without immediately using that person's blackness as a framework for understanding why this crime was committed. Invoking the criminal's blackness before there's any particularly good reason to do so only serves to further smear and malign the millions of black people who are in no way aligned or affiliated with the alleged criminal. So that black woman didn't rob the store because she was black and black people just love robbing shit. She robbed it because she wanted the money. And I can't think of too many instances where a white person can commit a crime and have the response from the masses be to blame it on a white. Or in other words, blame that person's whiteness for the violence. But I can think of one, mass shootings. It's impossible to live in America and not be aware of its issue with gun massacres. And most of these gunmen are white men. And if you look at their ideologies, if you look at why they decided to end their lives by indiscriminately or discriminately ending a bunch of other lives, you find a disturbing trend. Just this summer, there was a mass shooting in El Paso, Texas that resulted in 22 murders. The shooter, before the shooting, went online and shared a diatribe full of white nationalist views. He then drove 10 hours toward America's border with Mexico to kill as many brown people as possible. In 2015, a 21-year-old white man walked into a historic black church in Charleston, South Carolina, where he attended Bible study with 12 other people before pulling out a gun and murdering the churchgoers. When asked why he was about to shoot a bunch of people who were literally just praying with him a second ago, he said, I have to do it. You rape our women and you're taking over our country and you have to go. He killed nine people, all black. When we start to look into the motives behind some of these incidents of incredible violence and loss of life, we see white people, particularly white men, harboring an overwhelming contempt for people of color. Logic in his line seems to suggest that we decenter whiteness from our evaluation of what happens here when we look at mass shootings committed by white people, most of them. FBI Director Christopher Rice testified to the Senate Intelligence Committee in July of this year. I will say that a majority of the domestic terrorism cases that we've investigated are motivated by some version of what you might call white supremacist violence. Now, I don't want to conflate mass shootings with domestic terrorism. Mass shootings are generally defined as at least three or four people being killed or shot by a gun in a single incident. Whereas terrorism is the use of unlawful violence as a means to a political end. But FBI Director Christopher Ray's testimony still speaks to my point here. The, the majority of the terrorism that happens on U.S. soil is fueled by an ideology that teaches white people that they are superior to all other races. These white people believe that people of color are literally worth less and that motivates some of them to go out and kill in droves. I don't think whiteness should be decentered from our conversation here because I think whiteness is an essential component of this very tragic, very violent part of life in America. Some of you may be thinking, sure Antoine, but logic surely doesn't mean to vindicate white supremacy here, right? And yeah, I mean, at this point, I don't think his politics are very developed in any direction, but his intent here kind of doesn't matter. He wrote these lines and then recorded them and sold them for money. As far as I'm concerned, he's responsible for whatever message this puts forth. And so when he wrote these lines, he thought to himself, you know what? It sucks that black people and Muslims are routinely stereotyped as being violent and criminal and criminally violent. And then he said, oh, and white people too. And that's wrong. And it's so dumb that I have to say this, but we live in a society, I don't think all white people are harboring white nationalist views or white supremacist views. But to try to separate these white people from their whiteness while also trying to make sense of their actions is nonsensical. And this nonsense sits at the root of this dumb line from logic. Logic and the perils of simplicity. Logic sits in this weird place in the world as a white passing biracial black man. 
He's experienced racism at the hands of his white family, and he feel like he's had a hard time getting into the rap game as a white man. I think Logic knows firsthand just how arbitrary our conception of race really is. He knows that there's no real rhyme or reason as to how or why your race gets to affect the life that you get to live. And so he can get up on stage and say that he's advocating for peace, love, and positivity, and that he believes that everybody was born equal, regardless of race, religion, color, creed, and sexual orientation, and feel like he's made a point. But this falls flat because his music doesn't seem to really grapple with what race means in our society. He seems to think that all the races are sort of on equal footing and petty grievances and tribalism are what separate us and accentuate racial tensions. It's easier to understand his refusal to admit that he benefits from white privilege through this lens. White privilege doesn't make sense when your notion of whiteness is partially informed by your childhood trauma of being black and being teased for being white in black spaces. It seems that his conception of just how much power white people get to wield in this country and in this world is clouded and so he can't seem to recognize that white people undeniably have a leg up on everybody else. For most intents and purposes, this country is run by white people. 43 of the 44 men who have ever been president were white. That last one was half white. Congress is mostly white. Most of the people in executive offices of large companies are white. The heads of the music industry, yes, even fucking hip hop logic are white. Logic downplays the inherent violence of racism and doesn't seem to grasp the overwhelming magnitude of this social structure of race. And so he takes all of that, ignores it, or puts it to the side in order to instead put forth this message about how we should all just drop the divisiveness of race and just be people. Just everybody be nice to each other. Guys, why aren't you being nice to each other? I don't want to be black. I don't want to be white. I just want to be a man today. I don't want but this colorblind approach to racism is never helpful. The reality is that we can't just all drop the labels and hug it out. Race is a fixture of human society at this point. If we're ever going to deal with it, it'll entail a comprehensive look at how racism exists today and how it's evolved throughout history. And even if we could just drop the labels overnight, if Lazi didn't have to be black or white and he can just be a man, you know, fuck race, but gender's fine, I guess. That would do nothing to rectify the millennia of injustice that oppressed racial groups have endured at the hands of their oppressors. I feel like I've been mean to Logic in this video. So if you're a Logic stan for some reason, I'm sorry about that. But this has always bugged me about this otherwise jovial, trivial, lighthearted conversation about his being biracial. I heard that white privilege line more than a year ago and it still makes me so mad. Logic peddles this fluffy, basic idea that he believes everybody is equal and discrimination on the grounds of race, religion, sexual orientation, etc. is wrong. But then he turns around and spits in your face, what the fuck is white privilege, just so that he can defend his biracial identity when no one was ever attacking it. It's insulting and honestly a little hypocritical. Like, Logic, we get that you think racism is bad, but what now? We can sit here and ruminate in how great life would be if human beings never invented the concept of race. But we can also do something about all the racism. Hey, even if we aren't making active strides toward the elimination of racism, we should at least be able to study how racism affects our lives and our society. Oh, look, here's the thing. It looks like people who are white or who other people perceive to be white tend to run into more advantages in life and thus tend to live better lives. We haven't even gotten into the mechanics of how these better lives manifest. This phenomenon clearly exists, and we call it white privilege. Where did I lose you, Logic? If the police interrogates you later, you're gonna be able to describe him, and you're gonna say he was white. Fuck the police. Why did I make this video? Racism is really important. And I think we should all care about racism. If there's anything that any one of us can do to help eliminate racism, if that's even possible, then we should do it. Logic talks about race. Logic makes it a component of his music, of his celebrity, of his persona, the personality that he puts on the world stage. And I think Logic puts forth this idea of racism, whereby racism is 
primarily conducted by individuals. The problem is that the fight against racism isn't a fight against racist individuals. It's not a fight against your racist grandparents or the racist music industry or even racist ideologies or racist governments. The fight against racism is a fight against society as we know it. Race and racism are now components of our society at large and society penetrates and socializes almost every single human person on the planet. And so racism is embedded in almost every single human person on the planet. And when you don't recognize that, when you don't start from there, you end up with shit like a white passing white man telling you that white privilege isn't real and that he's not going to try to understand it and that he doesn't know what it means and that he doesn't care. 